namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namaste. So in our discussions so far about Nibbana, we've come across the simile or the metaphor of the stream. One is in the stream entry, Sotapana, and the other one is crossing the stream and reaching the farther shore. Are these both the same streams? No. <laughs> it's a little bit confusing, but you have to understand the stream is used as, in a, as a simile, a metaphor in two different contexts. The stream entry is the context of one who is advancing and getting realizations, path realizations on the Eightfold Path. And the other one is a general illustration of the spiritual path and reaching Nibbana. So they're a little bit different. In the context of entering the stream, Sotapana, it means that one has now got the vision of the absolute, the non-dual, ajatta, the unborn, akata, the unmade, asankata, the unfabricated. And because of that vision, now he's on firm footing. Now he's going to be carried along by that vision. And within a maximum of seven lifetimes, attain complete liberation. That's one kind of stream, the stream that flows toward the ocean of liberation. Then there's another kind of stream, which is the constant stream of impressions, thoughts, sense desires, and sense impressions generated by the mind. That's a completely different stream. <laughs> Don't confuse the two because that stream leads away from enlightenment and towards increasing entanglement in birth and death in the material world. So we want to enter the first stream, the stream that leads us to liberation, the stream of the teaching. And we want to cross over the second stream, the stream of sense desires that leads to entanglement. So we're going to talk about the second stream in this particular video. I want to clarify some of the things, some of the excerpts that we quoted from the suttas in the previous episodes. And these will not only use the uh, simile of the stream, they will also bring us closer to understanding paticca samupada, dependent arising. So here's the first quote. There is that sphere, monks, where there is no earth, no water, no fire, no air, no sphere of infinite space, no sphere of infinite consciousness, no sphere of nothingness, no sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. No this world no world beyond, neither moon nor sun. There, monks, I say, there is surely no coming, no going, no persisting, no passing away, no rebirth. It is quite without support, unmoving, without an object. Just this is the end of suffering. But this is quite an impressive verse. 
What is he talking about here? In the beginning of the verse, he's talking about the jhanas. The jhanas are states of meditation that the Buddha outlined. And we're going to go into the jhanas later on in this series. But right now, know that there are basically two divisions of the jhanas. The rupa jhanas and the arupa jhanas. The meditative states about form and the meditative states without form. The form and the formlessness are both conditionings. They are both arisings dependent on a cause. And therefore, they are both illusory. Huh? Because the idea of formlessness is dependent on the idea of form. Isn't it? Just like the idea of nothingness is dependent on the idea of a thing. Anytime you negate something, the negation is dependent on the positive assertion. For example, Satanism huh, is so silly because Satanism, even though it's supposed to be against God and against religion and so on, is actually based on the whole context created by religion. And without that context, there would be no meaning. So in the same way, anytime you negate something or create an opposite of something, it's actually an affirmation of the positive thing. See, this is the Buddha's logic. So formlessness is just as much of a fabrication as form. That means all of the jhanas are actually fabrications. But that's okay, because they lead us step by step to the doorway to Nibbana. And so we're going to go into those when we get into the method, the actual techniques of sadhana and meditation. Then he says, no world, no world beyond, neither moon nor sun. See, there's no this world, huh? because the world is a jatta. The world is unborn. It was never created, actually. It's just an illusion based on our ignorance and delusion. Huh? Ignorance means positive and negative desire. I want this and I don't want that. Delusion means I think I can make an arrangement in this world such that I can enjoy. But of course, that's a delusion because there's karma or kamma. And because of kamma, whatever we do, we get an equal and opposite reaction. So if we try to enjoy this world, we get nothing but suffering. Oh yeah, we may enjoy it for a few moments uh, or a certain amount of time. But then comes the reaction. And whatever we are, wherever we are, whatever we do, we're going to have to die and be reborn. And that is nothing but suffering. So then he goes on. There, monks, I say, there is surely no coming, no going. No coming or going. What does that mean? It means there's no motion, no space, no time, no dimension. Huh? And in the same way, no persisting, no passing away, no rebirth. There's no body, there's no mind. There's no time, no cause and effect. So there's no way that one can come into being or pass away from being or be reborn. Then finally he says, it is quite without support. Now, everything that we can cognize in this world has some support. It has a cause. It is the effect of those causes. And when those causes change or dissipate, then the thing disappears. 
And that's the foundation of Paticca Samuppada, cause and effect. So he says, is without support, unmoving, without an object. There's no subject-object duality in Nibbana. What is it? It's just the end of suffering. Strive forth and cut off the stream. Discard sense desires, O Brahmana. Having known the destruction of fabrications, become a knower of the unmade, O Brahmana. So here again, he's talking about the stream. This is the stream of desires, the stream of sense impressions, the stream that carries one towards increasing complexity and bondage and conditioning in the material world. So he's saying, cut off this stream by knowing the end of fabrications. Fabrications are desires. They are visualizations in the mind of a state that we want to attain in this world, either positive or negative, either I want this or I don't want that. So he's saying, give that up, stop it. Stop creating fabrications. This is how you cut off the stream. Arising in the world, Katyayana, seen and correctly understood just as it is, shows there is no non-existence in the world. Cessation in the world, Katyayana, seen and correctly understood just as it is, shows there is no permanent existence in the world. Thus, avoiding both extremes, the Tathagata teaches the Dhamma by the middle path. That is, this being, that becomes. With the arising of this, that arises. When this does not exist, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. While hearing this exposition of the Dhamma, the mind of faithful, venerable Katyayana was liberated from the taints through non-clinging. So we see in the world that things arise. Therefore, we can't say there, the world is non-existent. And we see in the world that there is cessation of things. Therefore, we can't say that the world is existent either. <laughs> These are two extremes, again, existence and non-existence. To cognize non-existence, we have to say that there's existence. But we know that the world is unborn. So then, how can we understand it? By the middle path. It's neither existence nor non-existence, neither true nor false, right nor wrong, black or white, huh? birth nor death. This is the middle path. Not the way it's misunderstood in Western Buddhism, especially, is that it's some wimpy compromise between being strict and being loose uh, with morality. That's completely wrong. The middle path means paticca samuppada. This exists, the cause exists, therefore the effect comes into being. And when the cause disappears, so does the effect, poof like a fire. When the conditions are right for a fire, it burns. Well, when those conditions change, like it runs out of fuel, or it runs out of air, or it gets doused with water, then the fire, we say, goes out. But it doesn't go anywhere. It simply ceases to exist. So those two extremes are not what the Buddha teaches. He teaches by the middle path. When there's a cause, there's an effect. When the cause disappears, so does the effect. Unto them that stand midstream, when the frightful floods flow forth. Uh, what stream are we talking about now? The stream of sense desires. We have a whole series on this called Papancha. Papancha means when one receives a certain impression that is in harmony with his conditioning, this gives rise to a whole flood 
or an avalanche, papancha means actually avalanche, of sense impressions and related thoughts. It's like you've seen those videos where somebody knocks over one domino and then the whole string of dominoes crashes, right? It's like that. This is conditioned thought. So this stream or this avalanche caused by conditioned thought, this is the frightful flow huh, of the stream. And if we're in between, neither on the shore of materialism nor on the shore of liberation. In other words, we're a sadhaka and we're trying to meditate and gain liberation. This can catch us unawares and wipe us off our feet. So the Buddha replies to this, that he will create an island. Uh, and what is that island? Owning naught, grasping naught. The isle is this, none else besides. Nibbana, that is how I call this isle. So this is the life preserver. <laughs> this is the rescue from the flowing stream. This is the rescue from the avalanche of impressions that arises from conditioned consciousness. That you simply stop grasping. You simply let go of the idea of owning anything, including your body and your mind. Just drop them, distance yourself from them. And that will give you the perspective not to be affected by the changes in the body and mind. This is wonderful. Huh? This is peaceful. This is excellent, as the Buddha says. This is Nibbana. Whatever phenomena arise from cause, their cause and their cessation, such is the teaching of the Tathagata, the great contemplative. This is the verse through which Sariputta attained stream entry. Just by hearing the first line, those things that arise from cause, the phenomena in the world, every phenomenon has a cause. So if it has a cause, then it can be eliminated by removing that cause. Because why? This exists, there, therefore that arises. This disappears, that ceases. This is conditioned arising or paticca samupada. And of course, now that I brought it up, <laughs> I'm going to have to explain it. But that's going to be in the next video. Right now, just know, that whatever phenomena we experience in the world or even in the formless is the result of some cause. And because it's caused, it can be removed by removing the cause. And that is the key to attaining enlightenment. And that is the heart of the Buddha's teaching. Aum. Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.